Hello, in this video we're going to talk about a really awesome question that one of my students asked um, a few years ago and this problem came about because we were studying in class uh, the volume of a cylinder and in class we talked about how the volume of a cylinder um, to, to solve it, and, or one way to think about it is to think of the area of a circle on the bottom, right? What's that? Well, that's pi r squared. And then if you had a, a circle with a height of 1, like one unit on the bottom, you can think of that as one layer of the cylinder. So to find the total cylinder, you're really finding out how many layers fill this cylinder. And to do that, you just calculate the volume, that the area of one of the circles with the height of 1, and then multiply it by the total height. And this equals the volume of a cylinder. And then for a, a project, we asked students to, to play with these shapes. We, we talked about cylinders and, and spheres and cubes, and one of our students came up with this awesome idea about taking a cylinder, right, just like this, and then taking another cylinder with equal radius and height, but, but having them intersect so that they're perpendicular to each other. Something like this. And I, I love this question because, well, what's so interesting about the shape in the middle, right? Uh, first of all, it has a really cool name. We call it the vault. And it has connections to architecture, and it has all these cool connections to a lot of different things. But we can figure out the, the volume of the vault by just using a couple of things. We, we were to use the area of a circle. That's something we cover in other videos, but we definitely need to know it here. The volume of a sphere, which we also cover in other videos, and I'm, I might briefly go over it here. So the area of a circle, the volume of a sphere, area of a rectangle, and um, basic understanding of ratios, which is so cool to me that we can solve a problem that's, that seems just so complicated, like the shape in here, it seems so difficult to think about, and we can use calculus to deal with it, but isn't it so neat that we can also figure out the volume of the shape by just thinking about these simple concepts, spheres, circles, ratios, and areas of rectangles. And I'm going to walk us through kind of how to deal with that. But first, let me, I want to show you, um, I, th I think a th it's nice to look at a 3D rotation of the shape in the middle, the vault. So this, this applet right here is on math.umn.edu. And um, I, I just love it because you can rotate the shape and look at the vault from all these different perspectives. Right, you can see the curvature right there. And in fact, there's the circle. We talked about knowing the area of a circle. That's, that's going to come in handy. Right, we turn it around. Right, we can look at just how that shape looks when it is being intersected by the cylinders. And notice from this perspective, this is going to help us in a little bit, you can almost see the way the computer animation has, has drawn this shape, the applet has drawn this shape, is that uh, you can see these squares here, layers and layers of squares. So from this perspective, the vault, if you look at it in slices, you can see these squares, and that's really going to help us to solve, uh, to, me, to figure out the volume of the vault. But I just wanted to give you a chance to look at how it, ro how it looks when you rotate around it to get a better sense of the complexity of that shape. So what do we do? How do we, how do we solve this? Well, um, I love, well, I love this one approach to solving it because we're going to think of this vault in terms of two dimensions. And often, in, especially in middle school, when we're first looking at these kind of shapes, we want to connect 2D to 3D, right? A lot of things we we think about in 3D are based on our understanding of two dimensions and so forth, just as our, our understanding of one dimension and zero dimensions, right? A point help us think about all these other ideas. They really build on each other. So we're going to think about the vault in terms of slices. And that's really going to help us. So how do we do that? Well, one question we need to ask ourselves is, what does a cylinder look like if we cut it? 
really thin this way. And at first you might be tempted to say that it's some type of circle. But in fact, if we think about it from, if we're slicing it, right, I'm gonna try to, to show that slice here. Maybe slice along the middle or the edge here, and then we come down and we slice again right here, right? It's a vertical slice. You can almost see it right there. Well, in this shape, if the height are equal, the heights of this cut are equal on both sides, and this and this are also equal. We have four equal sides, and here we have right angles, right? Because we know it's a right circular cylinder. What do we have? We have a rectangle. So when we slice, when we slice this cylinder, we get a rectangle. What about the intersection? Well, the same thing's going to happen. Just now we're going to have we're going to have, well, well, let's see, draw a cylinder this way, All right? And then think of this other cylinder I'm about to draw as being the exact same size except turned. Just putting it that way. And my drawing is definitely off. <laughs> maybe, I should, maybe I should make a new one. Here, let me make another one. Sorry about that. So it's time I want to use the line tool. I have one cylinder this way, it has two lengths like that. This is my slice of the vertical cylinder, right? We established it's going to be a rectangle. Actually, let me use the rectangle tool. So we know that this, the slice of a cylinder is going to form a rectangle. Well, if I have, if I have two, two cylinders intersecting each other, that's, and I slice both of them, I'm going to have two rectangles. And this intersection right here is actually going to be a square, which is so great, it's so cool, that this intersection right here is going to have the same uh, height and width. How do I know they're, they're going to be equal? Well, we've established that from the very beginning, the way this problem is designed, is that both cylinders are the exact same. So for this cylinder right here, and actually, let me draw it in a different color, maybe, maybe orange. Let me set this up. That's, I think, a little bit better. I'm having a hard time getting these centered. Try one more time. Okay. How do we know that the shape in the middle is a square? Well, if this cylinder in orange has the same height as the cylinder in green, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the distance the orange cylinder has to go across the green cylinder will be the exact distance that the green cylinder needs to go across the orange cylinder because they're the exact same size. So in fact, this shape in the middle is a square. And the idea, right, to figure out what the vault is, to take the slice, um, if we can imagine a square, right, happening any, at any point in the slice of the cylinder, we could also imagine that in any square we could fit a cylinder, a, a, a circle, right? So within, within this square, we could also fit a cylinder. Try that one more time. There we go. And I said it again. Within this square, we can fit a circle. And if we think about that in terms of three dimensions, that's actually a sphere. Um, so we have a sphere inside whatever this vault shape thing is. So the sphere and the vault, what does that mean? Well, if we have a circle right here, here with a radius and a diameter across the circle, what's the area of that circle? Well, the circle, right? has an area of pi times radius squared. Then what is the square around it? Well, the square, the area of a square is just a side by side. And how long is, is this side in terms of the circle? Well, it's a diameter, right? It's two radiuses. So two radiuses by two radiuses. So the area of the square is two radiuses times two radiuses. And then we're going to simplify this. So the ratio of the this, this circle is pi r squared to the square is 4 r squared. Now we want to simplify this and divide both sides by r squared. So what, what do I get if I take 4 r squared and divide, divide it by r squared? That's just going to be 4. And I'm keeping my ratio balanced. So what's, what's pi r squared divided by r squared? That's just pi. Believe it or not, we're, we're almost done with this problem. We almost can find the, the volume of a vault. We're just about one step away. 
And in fact, that's what I think is so interesting about this problem and amazing, that we know the ratio of a circle to a square is pi to 4 within the vault. So instead of a circle, if I think of the sphere, right, to the vault, I can use what I know about the volume of a sphere and this ratio right here to find the volume of a vault. So what's the volume of a sphere? I'm going to write that down here. The volume of a sphere is what? Um, one way to write the volume of a sphere is as 4 thirds pi r cubed. And that's going to help us. Okay, so we're going to bring this all together now. We have the volume of a sphere. We have the ratio of a circle to a square. We have the 2D cuts of this shape. And we know that wherever we cut the vault, we can fit a circle inside and a square on top. So all together, the sphere to the vault is going to be the exact same ratio as the circle to the square. Right? The 2D slices anywhere in the vault are going to represent that cut of the sphere, the circle, to that cut of the vault, which is always going to be a square. So what do we, what do, we do? Well, let's rewrite our ratio right here with the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed to the volume of a vault, whatever it is. I'm going to rewrite the order of this, this equation using the commutative property. Right? I can multiply these things in any order and it won't change the answer. So a nice way to rewrite it for our sake is to rewrite it as 4 thirds r, oops, r cubed, r cubed pi to the volume of a vault. Now, maybe you can see it right now, and we're just right there. If our ratio right here is pi to 4, what does that mean? Well, that means here we have 4 thirds r cubed pi. So what do we have as a, as the, for the volume of a vault? Well, if this ratio is going to follow the same ratio as the rules to the circle to a square, then we can use this ratio to figure out what the unknown is. And we can set up a proportion to do that, but I'm just going to talk us through it. Um, I'm going to write pi to 4 right here for now. Well, let's explore this ratio for a moment, and then we'll go to this example right here. If, if the ratio of the circle to the square is pi to 4, we can mess around with, the, with this equation. I could multiply both sides by 4 thirds, right? Because if I multiply pi by 4 thirds, to keep the equation balanced, I should also multiply the other side by 4 thirds. I can multiply both sides by r cubed, right? And it wouldn't be changing anything because I'm keeping the equation balanced. So in fact, this ratio right here is the same thing as pi to 4. All I did was manipulate the sides, right? I, I multiplied both sides by the same amount, just to write it in a different form. And you can almost see it right here, how these two equations are in fact identical, which means that what do we have right here? This is going to be the volume of a vault. So let me rewrite that in a different way and talk us through it. So, because I know this part's a little, a little hairy, a little tricky. So what are we doing here? Well, we know the ratio we want to attain, we're, that we're using, the ratio we're starting with, is the circle to the square. That's pi to four. So now we're going to look at the ratio of a, of a sphere to a vault with the idea that any 2D slice of the vault, we can fit a circle inside and a rectangle, a square around it. So, now we just tie it all together. 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, if that's, if that's this side of the equation right here, pi, what we did to pi was to also multiply it by 4 thirds r cubed. So to keep this equation balanced, right, we have pi to 4, to keep this equation balanced, we should also multiply this side by 4 thirds r cubed. Right? Both sides of the equation, we should multiply by 4 thirds r cubed. So this side of the equation right here is actually the volume of a vault. We're just going to simplify. What's 4 times 4 thirds? Well, that's, that's 16 thirds. And r cubed we can leave. And now, in fact, I'm just going to leave that right there because that is what we're curious about. So to find the volume of a vault, the intersection of two cylinders that have the same height and let's say a radius of 1, right, to keep it simple, is going to be 16 over 3 r cubed. 
Isn't it amazing that we can actually find that shape by just setting up a simple ratio between a circle and a square? And this is something that Archimedes, right, realized a very long time ago, right? Before we were implementing calculus and other types of math, he used ratios to figure out what this shape really is. And what, what's so neat about that is that this has wide-reaching implications and connections to all kinds of cool stuff like architecture. Check out this, this image right here. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at what's called a groin vault. I think I'm going to spell it right. A groin vault. I'm not going to get into the groin vault because I'm certainly no expert in architecture. But I'm going to point out that what you're really seeing here on the groin vault right in this architecture these cross beams right here it's as if you're inside right inside the intersection of two cylinders looking out at the vault this is the top part of the vault that's inside these two cylinders right here these cross beams right we can look at them as as the vault themselves as if we were inside it so isn't that crazy that we actually use the idea of a vault the intersection of two cylinders and, and use that shape as a way to, to implement the awesome design into rooftops. And that's all this really is when you see this shape in architecture. You're looking uh, from the inside of the intersection of two cylinders, and this vault is cut in half, right? It's being cut, and you're looking at it from the inside. And from the applet, we can almost, I think, see it. Let me just turn this. Right. Right, you see these right here, these lines. If you were inside the vault looking up, could you imagine what it would look like? Well, it would look it would look exactly like this vault right here. So this vault, this question, uh, was asked by one of my students, has so many great implications. I hope you enjoy it.